some say it's a man's world, but it would not mean much without the hustle of strong women and our unique voices. This show is dedicated to a different kind of conversation. No cooking recipes, no celebrity gossip, rather business strategy and inspiration for women who are doing their thing and running their world. This is a show for and by Boss Ladies. And yes, I am talking about you because the adjective boss is defined as excellent and outstanding. And the noun ladies is defined as a term of respect for all women. You are excellent and outstanding, even if no one said it before. So it's time to put respect on that status. Thank you ladies so much for joining today's conversation. I'm really excited to talk about these different topics. So let me read some of the headlines and then I wanna get your take on these topics. Here we go. First headline, Beyonce's collaboration with Adidas could help the company win over a key customer and Nike should be terrified. Second one, the co-founder of MoviePass recounts what led to his firing from the company he built from the ground up, which we know happened to Steve Jobs and different people. Another headline, Facebook shareholders are making another dramatic bid to oust Mark Zuckerberg and abolish the firm's share structure. And lastly, Khloe Kardashian's clothing line, Good American, has seemingly removed Jordan Wood's bio from its site. Yikes. These headlines all surround strategic partnerships. So let's talk about them. How have your businesses either benefited or not benefited from different business partnerships? And let's just maybe go down the road. We'll start with you, Deanna. Well, I'd be happy to. In the world of real estate, you know, conducting a real estate transaction involves so many strategic partnerships. And you know, we have the privilege of being the realtor that is sort of at the front line, but it takes having strategic partnerships and a lot of people from attorneys to lenders to inspectors to, I mean, I could go down like 42 different entities just to get a transaction. And I think what's maybe a little different in our world than the world of the celebrities is where those are not just headliners, those are like head spinners. You know, just the words, we don't have that um, front page, hopefully not, right. of what's happening in our day to day. So we can just stay focused on what we're doing to help people have the American dream. Good, thank you. Yeah, Paige, what are, what are your thoughts? So in the world of martial arts, um, there's all sorts of we call it open mat time, where you run a business and maybe you have open mat time where you're not teaching a class. And lots of people want to, ooh, can I teach this thing? Can I teach this class? Can I, can I rent a little bit of mat space to do this activity? Um, and I really think that when you're working with other businesses, organizations, to try to bring them in as partners, you have to be really, really strategic about who you choose. Um, We've had some good experiences where we have partnered with some other people that have taught other arts and done some other things that have been great, but we've also had those instances where we brought someone in that we thought was gonna be a good idea and a good partnership and it just really wasn't in line with what our main goal and our main passion is, which is martial arts. So I feel like if you're going to go into business or partnership with someone else, you really need to make sure that it is absolutely headed in the same direction that you want your business to go in. So if they're not even focused on, for us, martial arts, and it's just some, um, let's say, example, a playtime or like a, a arts and craft time just because it's open map, you shouldn't do it because that's not in line with what your end game is, which is martial arts, focusing on your business and your goals. I love that. You know, I always think about business partnerships like dating relationships, and I do feel like so often, sometimes, people wink at you, you know, mm -hmm. they, they, they like your Instagram, right, right, they do a little, they like little something, and people are ready to get married, mm -hmm. which we wouldn't do, well, hopefully, we wouldn't do the <laughs> relationship, normally, you know, you've got to still get to know this other party, see how much everything aligns, so I agree, I love that. Jasmine, what are your thoughts? Um, I think I went to a slightly different place, and I was thinking more about um, the partnership that that I am building with my team and how much 
how, how important it is that the people that are with you, that are that are in the trenches with you every day, that we're all on the same page. Um, and so, so in the beginning, when I first uh, started building a team, um, you know, I thought like the first person I hired had to work out, and if I, for whatever reason they didn't work out, I felt like I, I failed. I failed. I did something wrong, um, and that's why they left. Um, but then I heard a woman who, who has a, a very large team doing the same thing that I do, and she said, you guys may see you know, that I only have 10 people on my team right now, but what you don't see is the 80 people that came and went, because that's how many people it took until we found somebody that was that cultural match that could, that could help us and then be a good partner to, to our business partners and be a, you know, responsible and reliable uh, for our clients. So I think it's important to just know, like know who you are at, at your core and then trust your gut that if that person is not the right fit for your team, you know, peace, peace out. Yes, sooner rather than later, I agree. And I'll just jump in here. Um, I thought about with my own business, the transition I made from being on a managing broker side in real estate to a trainer coach, which a lot of people have coaching businesses. And my business was very local until my partnerships. My partnerships were the thing that took me from a local to a national to now an international platform. The audiences, like I'll be in Australia next month, these audiences I speak in front of, they're not my people. They're someone else's. I've partnered with people who are like, no, we want you to come in. And that's opened a lot of doors for me. So I love partnerships, but back to everyone's point, I just think we have to be very strategic and thoughtful about it because they can really make our businesses, but also break them, right? But you said it so well, values have to be in alignment when you choose partnerships, whether it's partnerships in business or partnerships in life. And that's really a key component. Right, including hiring. I've gone through, I know we've gone through those stages where we're hiring people and some people aren't a good fit and I'm learning the older I get, just again, like in a dating relationship, you know what? You're a good person, but this isn't working out. So have a nice day instead of belaboring it and trying to make it fit, make it work. And instead, you know, we all just suffer from it. I think too, we're in a culture especially with social media. I mean, I love social media, love it hands down, but I also feel like it's caused this immediate reaction or immediate gratification when someone reaches out and is like, hey, we should do a partnership. Everyone immediately is like, oh, oh, you want to do a partnership with me? That doesn't mean that it's something you need to get involved with. You need to take a step back and you need to say, is this something that's really, really going to help my business? And really me as a business woman, as a business person, is this gonna help me grow? Or is this just gonna keep me where I'm at? Or is this gonna take me a couple steps back? It's now just a reflection on you. Yes, extension of you. Exactly, yes. exactly. You have to be really careful, I feel like. I love that, you know, and again, I don't mean to make it all about the whole dating side. <laughs> but I was just reading this book and it was talking about um, going beyond just a rec recreational or superficial mm -hmm. connection and having a directional connection. And I believe that again with our partnerships, whether it's our team or external partnerships, we have to be moving in the same direction, so. I feel like you also have to ask questions. The same in dating. When you go on a first date, if you just sit there and stare at each other, who knows what your future's gonna be. Yeah. You're not actually gonna learn anything about each other. So it's the same thing with a partnership. I feel like going into it, if someone reaches out to you, you have to be willing to ask those questions, even if they're the uncomfortable questions, like, why do you want to partner with me? And if it's just, oh, because you have a lot of followers and you seem like you're a happy person, that that's not really someone I want to bring into my business. If it's someone that says, I really can tell that you're passionate about what you do and I want to be a part of what you're doing, those are the partnerships you want to get involved with. They're not just the superficial ones that are just there because you've got a good thing going and they want to be a part of it because everyone wants to be a part of that good thing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, any other thoughts, ladies, on this topic? Otherwise, we'll switch gears.
ladies, let's shift and talk about now some money moves that we're making. So here's some more headlines. Have you heard about Uber's upcoming IPO? I'm sure you have. It's drawing a lot of excitement. Now, I, I've talked to some people that were like, oh, I wish I could have been one of the first investors. I really have made, would have made a lot of money. But I love this about IPOs. It gives us a chance to own a piece of the pie. However, I'm a little concerned. I have a little complicated relationship with Uber, and I, I feel like they have a complicated relationship with not only women employees, but also the riders who have had all types of situations occur, and I'll leave it at that. I don't want to say anything that's going to get us sued. So it's been in the news, right? We've seen all these different headlines. Should women invest? What are your thoughts? Are you investing in Uber? What do you think about when they drop their IPO? Well, I personally <laughs> feel like you have to decide what's important to you. You have to decide, are the values of this company what is important to me, or is the value of the dollar that I can make off this company what's important to me? And I know that I may get some flack for feeling that way because everyone has their opinions about it, but I just feel like, just like we were talking about partnerships, you have to do your homework. And if you feel like you're going to invest in a company that maybe has some different views than you may or may not have, you that's that's your choice and it's on you. It's also on you to make sure that you do your homework. Because you could also invest in a company early on that you think you have the same views and then find out later that they don't have the same views or values or when companies change hands and all sorts of things. So I feel like you just really have to do your homework and you have to decide what's more important to you. To another conversation we're having that when you go in and you believe in something and if you did choose this, you've got to be willing to be there in the good times and the bad. Because while it may be the hype of the day and the pick of the day or what have you, you know, long term. Now you're talking to the real estate agent here, and I mean Gallup poll after Gallup poll continues to say that real estate is the best long term investment by like 34 percent. Stocks are like 26 percent. Then it goes down. Gold's even better than some of the others, you know, in saving accounts. So you know, if you ask me as a real estate professional who's done this 25 years. I tend to prefer more of the steady, traditional approach. You know, I might diversify a little bit here and there because I do think that's important, but I like to go with what I can trust and also a little bit of what I, well, I can't always control the real estate market and cyclicalness. I know over the course of history that has proven to be something incredible, but it also goes back to my values that I know whether it's a rental property that I'm helping put someone in or in my own investment or building back in communities, you know, that's my passion. And so I feel good investing in real estate because I know it, I trust it, and I can ride it in the cyclicalness that anything's going to have. I love it. Jasmine, any thoughts on that? I don't think I have anything to add. I think your girls covered that pretty good. I think it's really about just trusting your gut and going, making the right moves. I agree. You know, I'm definitely, anytime I invest, whether it's in stocks or anything, I really do try to line up with my values. I don't want to sell myself out for mm -hmm. a buck, right? So believe it or not, I actually don't use Uber. I take either Lyft or shoot Super Shuttle when I'm traveling um, because I didn't like a lot of stances that Uber had. So I don't know that I'm gonna jump in on the investment side with them, <laughs> at least not now. And I, I do feel like there's enough out there Other whether, options. Yeah, yeah, exactly. where have to it's not gonna nice. yeah. 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 break me. You know, it's not a deal breaker. I do wanna ask you, since we're talking about stocks and different things, Pinterest has a stock coming up. But even outside of the stock arena, are you guys using Pinterest for marketing? Let's, let me give you some stats before we jump into that. <laughs> I know, I know, we're like, no, no, not really. <laughs> so here was the interesting thing. I saw this actually this morning. Um, their mission is to bring everyone the inspiration to create a life they love. The opportunities for Pinterest, 80% of U.S. women ages 18 to 64, excuse me, have children, use it. That's kind of a big deal. So do over half of millennials. And that combo um, really does set a trend, right? And then they said, but here's the challenge with Pinterest. It's a social network for positivity. And social networks, they're funded, they, they create their income through ads, like we know with Facebook and Google. So unfortunately, 
the the big wigs are saying that Pinterest doesn't really have a sustainable model, right, for income and growth. They they're saying it's even if you look at Snapchat, Snap, it's having problems because of it's not really based on an ad platform. So what are your thoughts, whether from the stock side or really just the marketing? Do you use it for marketing? What do you use for marketing? What, let's talk about that. So I am a big social media person, personally. I love it. I think it's great to connect people. I feel like Pinterest, personally, doesn't give you an opportunity to really capture someone's you can't capture them in the moment because when someone goes to Pinterest, I've used Pinterest to myself. I think it's a great place to go to and find recipes. To find recipes <laughs> or to find, really few, to find a few little workouts. But here's the thing when I personally use Pinterest, I never sit down to use Pinterest with the intent of spending more than a couple of minutes because I just want to save a few things to my board to go back later. So you're not going to capture me in that moment to try to convince me to spend my dollar on what it is that you want me to spend my dollar on. Or to build a relationship. Exactly. Or to build that back relationship. That relationship. Because I'm not there for that relationship. I'm there to save some stuff that I might go back later to honestly get some ideas. I may not even use the products that I'm saving. I'm just getting ideas to then go later. But I feel like some of the other platforms, like Instagram or Facebook, they give you an opportunity to do video, to do sound, to do clips, to do all sorts of things, targeted ads that you're, as a person that's spending the dollar on marketing to try to gain new people, I want to make sure that my marketing dollar is being spent the best way possible. And I would choose to use a platform that's going to capture them right away. So for me personally, I don't use Instagram other than I may have a friend that I'm hosting baby shower for, so I need to hurry up and save some good ideas on Pinterest to save. And honestly, I then go back later and send them to my good friend, and I'm like, hey, I found this stuff on Instagram, so here's my <laughs> ideas. So I personally would say no, I wouldn't use Instagram, or I wouldn't use Pinterest as a uh, platform for marketing or that I would really choose to invest in personally. <laughs> I get it. You know, um, one other fun fact they had here, 88% of pinners, people that use Pinterest, purchase a product that they pin. They said 88%. I don't know where that set came from. <laughs> Back to your point, Paige, I've used it and I have pins. I have never purchased anything. Right. But, you know. But this interesting statistic you shared, Lee, is about that 80% of U.S. women age 18 to 64, myself, with children, the children in my world, are who are using it and I do monitor my children on social media and I don't allow them to have accounts but Pinterest is one that my daughter has wanted and so she has come to me with decorating her room or things she has wanted for her chair or whatever it was and so I had to kind of be open-minded that that's where her exploration and her world is and someone has figured out how to target it to a different generation than I would ever have used and of course now my dollars Hats off, but it will be interesting back to the other point when we started out today talking about headliners and head spinners and when we, you know, the media is going to make the headliner have something, you know, tragic or ousting this or controversial or racy or, you know, whatever. Pinterest is just feel good. Yeah. And will that sustain, sustain, you know, I love feel good, but will that sustain in today's world of marketeers? It's anybody's call. We'll see. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'd also be curious just how long that stat, like how far back they've gone. Because, you know, nowadays with so many different uh, social networking, social media platforms, they have the, uh, I don't know, what's it called, where you can purchase through Amazon immediately from something that you see your phone recognizes it. So I'd be curious if there's going to be stats on other companies that are catching up, and maybe this is just their first year in using those apps where people can buy things automatically. It's going to probably like purchase it, it without right. you even pushing a button. It's just right. going to be oh, it's going to go. Okay, and she wants that. You know, that, yeah. that, yeah. that fluffy chair is going to show up at your door. <laughs> what? <laughs> but it, I, I think that Pinterest may be harder for people that are in, that are providing a service. You know, like. You know, we sell money. <laughs> right. It's really hard right. to put that. But right. if I was selling really pretty necklaces or rings Good or morning. something Good like morning. that, right. if I had a product, I, I think you. Pinterest would be. Because I know, like, you know, when we were when we bought our our building, we were decorating it. Like, 
I had boards and my, you know, my decorator, she loved the fact that I had a good Jillian boards because then very quickly she could realize like, okay, this is your style, this is what you want, this is what you want to see, as opposed to me saying, well, I kind of like the light blue, not the dark, you know, so I feel like depending on your industry, Pinterest may be, if we're it's all sort of It's a little bit of a niche, yeah, I feel yeah. like, because it's the feel good, the decorating, right. the quick fixes to things and stuff like that. So but don't you like it when somebody repins something you Oh, can. absolutely! <laughs> discussion here. I thank you so much for being on this week's board of directors. So until next time. Lee, on behalf of the board of directors, we want to take a moment and salute you for your vision, your passion, and just bringing together women and leaders from different walks, <laughs> different backgrounds, different industries, to come in and collaborate. And you know, when I was thinking about the opportunity to do this, it reminded me of Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, which is one of my favorite books and just a book that has led me so often in my career. And you know, in the book, he talks about having invisible counselors. And you've taken that to a whole new level by not just having invisible counselors that we have to go to in our head and say, what should we do? What might we do? What could we do? But to actually be able to come and collaborate with other women leaders. So thank you for inspiring us. And it's been an honor to meet each of you. Yeah. Thank you all again. I really, really appreciate it. Hats off because you are women of excellence. And thank you for sharing with our audience.